Hello YouTube, in this video I added the game mechanics to my 3D puzzle game. So in the last video, I mainly focused on planning and prototyping, so I never actually started the game. So right now, we're basically starting fresh. Now the first thing we need for the game is a player and the ground. So after opening up a brand new Unity project, I made them. The next thing that needs to happen is player movement, because standing still is, well, not fun. So after a little bit of coding, we have an error. And this error I've never seen before. So it's saying that I'm using the Unity Engine.input class when I haven't specified that in the project settings. Okay, this should be an easy fix. I just need to go to settings, check a box saying that I want to switch from the new input system back to the old input system. And wait, there's a new input system? Where have I been? After a few seconds of research, I found that this new input system is better in the long run because it basically lets you change the key bindings super easily. So now I'm faced with a choice. Be a responsible game developer and learn this new thing that will probably be better for my game in the long run, or just be lazy and use the old input system. And because I'm such a responsible game developer, I decided to learn the new Unity input system. Two hours later. So now, sticking with the wonderfully amazing, intuitively straightforward, old input system, the player can now look around perfectly. And a little bit of coding later, and now he can walk, sprint, and jump. If you remember from the last video, the player isn't just limited from walking on the floor, he's also allowed to walk on the walls and the ceilings. And in order to do this, we need to code in a little something called gravity. So a little while later, we just have to type in our gravity direction and the player will react accordingly. But on the wall right now, the player is acting like he's had a little bit too much to drink and he can't stand upright. So I gave him a few hours to sober up and now he can stand, move, and look properly when on the walls. So in the actual game, the player won't have access to the inspector to change his gravity. Not like I'd want that anyways. But now it's time to start work on the core mechanic, the camera gun. If you haven't watched the last video, the camera gun is basically just a gun that can shoot cameras. From these cameras, the player can do one of four things. Look around, shoot another camera, exit the camera, or teleport to the camera's position with the gravity of the wall that the camera is on. Right now, I'm just getting the mechanics in, so I'm not focusing on any of the graphics, which is why I'm simply just reusing the same models from prototyping. But now that we have something to represent the camera gun, we have to actually make it work. And a few hours later, it does. So now that that's all done, it's time to move on to the secondary mechanics, or what I like to call the puzzle elements. And these puzzle elements include switches, buttons, pressure plates, and lasers. Switches are pretty easy. They have an on state and an off state, and they switch between them when flipped. Buttons, on the other hand, are a little more complex, where you can only turn them on, and after a certain amount of time, they turn off automatically. So these are all working fine when there's only one button or one switch. But when we add in two, things start breaking. The way I coded it is that when the player looks at something with the button tag and presses E, all of the buttons get notified and act like they've just been pushed, when we really just want the button that was actually pushed to activate. The fix to this isn't that bad, we just have to give each button and each switch a unique ID, and after that, everything works fine. Next up, pressure plates. So these work by basically having two colliders, one for collision and one slightly higher to see if it's been stepped on. And the way I programmed it means that when I eventually add in interactable objects, it should work fine with those too. And now the fun part, lasers. So the lasers have two main components, well actually three, but we'll get to the third one in a little bit. The first component being the laser emitter, and the second component being the laser receiver. So what happens is that the laser emitter raycasts about like 100 meters and gets the emission point and the hit point and puts it into an array that gets sent into a line renderer that renders out the laser. If the hit object is the laser receiver, the laser turns green and gets activated. And if something's blocking it, it turns red. Now, I don't know if you've heard of them, but there are these things called mirrors. So yeah, that's basically what the third component of the lasers are. Adding these in is going to be a little tricky, mainly just because I don't have code in for interactable objects. So after a little bit of coding, I now have a box and a reflector. The reflector works by basically just shooting another laser from the exact point that it got hit with the other laser. And for the box, well, it doesn't really do anything. 
Now that we have all the puzzle elements in, I noticed something rather peculiar. If you activate the elements in a certain order, some letters will appear. And I think there's only one explanation to what's going on here. The US government obviously hacked into my computer and hid some nuclear launch codes inside of the files that I coded for the game. So I obviously had to figure out what they were. So if you enter that secret sequence in, you get this lovely message to tell you to subscribe. Huh, so I guess it wasn't a nuclear launch key. After that, I quickly coded up a little door, and I gave it the same ID as the laser. As you can see, the laser turning green makes it very easy for the player to know when the laser is actually activated. Which is good, because it resolves basically the big beef that I had with the lasers earlier. So now another mechanic that I came up with in prototyping that I think should stick around are the gravity pads which unsurprisingly changes the player's gravity in the direction that they're pointing at. So now there's one more new thing that I came up with that I think would really suit the game well. If you remember from the very original prototype, I had a mechanic called camera pulling, but that mechanic kind of conflicted with the main mechanic and I wouldn't want players to get confused, so I just removed it entirely. But there were some parts of it that I wanted to keep in. For example, with that, the player can actually remove objects from pressure plates without actually going over and grabbing them. And this little ability was never replaced until now. Now this idea is similar, but a little different. From the camera gun, you can now shoot something called a pull point onto the wall, and then shoot an object to be pulled towards. Oh, and I also haven't added any visual feedback yet, so I basically just put a camera over the pull point so you know where it's going. And because vector subtraction has no place in my brain, the cube seems to be fleeing from our pull point instead of actually being pulled towards it. But I think I know what's actually going on. So not a lot of people know this, but the Earth is actually round. And what our cube is doing, it's just trying to find the longest possible path to reach our pull point. So it's traveling about 40 million meters instead of 10. Which doesn't exactly strike me as the smartest decision. So now after a little bit of coding, he goes right towards the pull point. I think this new mechanic is a lot better than the old camera pulling because it basically just resolves every issue that I have with the old one. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more, you can click right here to watch episode 3, when it comes out of course, or right down here to watch this pretty difficult game development challenge that I tried. So if you made it this far into the video, you obviously liked it at least a little bit, so please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you'll never miss an upload. Thanks, see you soon.